Well, we're back Madlarkin on the Ebu River. Just don't move. I just told Phil not to move. Well, we're back on the River Ebu. Today, I'm equipped with my nice, shiny, new backpack and my polarized sunglasses, so we're all ready to go as we search on this lovely evening in September. We're going to be heading up river in a moment, but I just wanted to tell you a little bit of the story of the bridge here. There are a number of bridges along the River Ebu of note. Just up above, there was at one time a 32-arch viaduct that was built in 1802. Carried iron and steel and coal up to the Trinigar Iron Works in Sarawi and took the materials down to Newport to the docks. There was another bridge on this river, another little viaduct, and that served as the oldest still in use railway viaduct and that is almost 200 years old built in 1826 but this bridge legend has it has nothing whatsoever to do with industry it's all to do with love there was a gentleman who lived this side of the river who wanted to court a young lady from the other side of the river and there was no means to cross so he built one and his courtship must have been successful because not only did they marry but in December of 1809 the Cambrian newspaper carried the announcement of the birth of their 26th child well enough history for now enough legends and enough love stories time to do some mudlarking oh look It's a really old, really heavy lock. Let's have a look at the other side. Oh, it's really smelly. Very damp and rusty. Yeah. There's some age on that. Look, there's roots growing through the lock. Well, I think there's a few bugs and things living in it. So I don't yes. think it'll come home with us. I think it needs to go back. It's very Wait nice, though. So let's pop it back so all the creatures can carry on living in it and we'll keep looking. Now this is a really messy place. There's lots of modern rubbish, but there are some interesting things too. The river's quite shallow, quite clear, and the beach goes all the way up there too. There's some interesting natural things here. Can you see the fungi? Little toadstools where the fairies come on a hot day and sit underneath them with a drink of lemonade to keep cool. Come on, pop your wellies on, and in we go. It's still a bit slimy underfoot, so be a bit careful when you're putting your feet down. We don't want anybody falling in. Hmm, I don't know if we'll see a lot because of the light reflecting on the top of the water. And I haven't got my grabby thingy with me, so I'm having to bend over right down to pick things up. And what's this? Is that plain or patterned? Plain. 
Hmm, I wonder if Phil's found anything. We'll work our way along. Ah, there we go. We can get back on. Oops, onto the beach. It's a bit slippy. And see if there's anything here. Uh, I don't think there's much left of this one. What have you got? Oh, shopping trolley. Well, right. <laughs> part of a shopping trolley. We'll come in, we'll come in. There you go. It's a bit of a trolley. Actually, I spotted a fair bit of metal as I was coming in here. Just along the way, there's girders and all sorts. All oh, right. So, have a little look. There's a bracket up there. We'll Might go and check it out. Well, then let's go and check out this bracket Phil was saying about. Ooh, it's very slimy down here. A bracket. Can you see a bracket, anyone? Oops. Oh. Like a boomerang with bolts in. Look at that. It's still attached to some wood, which is well rotted. You can see the bolts. So look at the bolts. Oh, I don't think they're square heads, are they? Lovely looking thing, though. And over here, we do have somebody's exhaust pipe i think oh no i think this if we look at it all the way there if i step back a bit i think that's possibly part of a wheelbarrow what do you reckon and we've got a bit of a brick a tillery brick a bit of an old old leather shoe isn't that lovely 14 isle shoe there well <laughs> a little bit of a 14 isle shoe i wonder who wore that I wonder if they wore it out or whether they lost it in the river. I would have thought they wore it out and it's washed in from the tip because if you lost your shoe in the river, in those days you went back to find it. If we take our home, yeah. we could make some iron brew. Iron brew, made in Scotland from girders, or at least so the advert said. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? A piece of glass? Mm, spotty top. Let's take it down and give it a little swell. I would think, let's give it a wash, that that is off a Corona bottle. Now you may have noticed I haven't got my gloves on because we just came here for a quick bit of footage before we travelled on to another place and then we found this beach and so I haven't got my grabby thingy, I haven't got my bag, I haven't got my gloves. <gasps> What's a girl to do? Yet more conveyor belt. Oh, from the pit? Yeah. Or the coal mine? You can see on this one, normally I show the joint, but you can see where the teeth have been in there, but they've all been taken out. It's a toothless joint. See the holes? Oh, yeah. Where it was clamped all the way along? And the whole thing must have pulled out. And see, they rounded the edge like that. Mm -hmm. Deliberately. Because... Otherwise, you have a square edge and it would catch on things. Right. So they'd round the edge on the joint so that it would sort of ride over things and push around. Hmm. Right, we'll go for a wander along this bit of the shore. Don't forget, shout if you see something. But don't shout if you see rubbish, because there's tons of it. I found a bit more of my trolley. Oh, yes. See? My trolley. I just need another handle. Yep. And a few other bits. <laughs> a lot of other bits. That is a jolly decomposed trolley. It is. Poor thing. Oh, here's a piece of wall. If you want to build a house, you can make a start with this little piece of wall out of breeze blocks. Hmm. There are some little tiny pieces of china there. And another piece there. And a leaf. But I'm not finding anything exciting. I think the problem is we're too far downstream from the tip. But it's always worth a look anyway. You never know what you'll find. I always see things like that and think, oh, is it a piece of pipe stem that's black from being underwater? And then you realise, no. Oh, that's firmly stuck in. It's a bit of wire. Phil has gone on ahead. He's going to try to retrieve an Ebuvale yellow brick which apparently are quite rare and he knows there are some down there as you may have seen in the film last week there he is hmm 
while he's going there we'll have a look down here we've got a brick here all our regular people will know if that says national newport it's probably national star brick company newport oh it's not too bad to walk in whoops she says falling over Well, there's another piece of wall. If we were collecting buildings today, we'd be doing really well. I'll put my foot on there so you can see size. And we're working our way up to that beach over there. The noise is filled, clattering things. I found a brick. Oh. In fact, mm. three bricks. Three? Ooh. One brick, two bricks, and in the water out there is a brick that appeared on our previous video. Oh, right. An it's underwater a, brick. A famous brick. The reason I've come back to this island is because that's the banking I had to climb last time and it was very steep, so I couldn't take the bricks with me. Even though I don't have a yellow Ebervale brick in my collection and I haven't seen them except on this island. What's more, when Caroline was doing a little research, she found that a local museum a couple of years ago put out a post saying, please does anyone have an Ebervale yellow brick with a clear imprint on it? Well, I've now got three by her. Ooh, show off. They may well have had one donated, but if they were asking, it must be worth taking. I'm not greedy. I'm going to take two of these. One for me, and if the Ebervale Museum, Industrial Museum wants one, one for them. But I'm going to put them in my nice new bag, and I'm going to see if I can climb that bank in with two bricks. Test drive for my nice new bag of Lexi. Here we go. And I'm going to have the one out of the river. Here you have it, caught on camera. The yellow Ebu Vale brick being retrieved from the river by the Mr. Philip Johnson. Oh my gosh, it's cold water. Who doesn't like the cold? Ooh. There we go. Oh, very impressive. In that boot. It's upside down. All right, then. <laughs> come on, come on. Give In our boot. <laughs> yes. Very nice. Now, Phil is carrying his bricks in his backpack. Do any of you know what they call the thing that a builder or a bricklayer would carry his bricks in? Not mm. a backpack. No, it's not a backpack. Leave your answer in the comment below. What does a bricklayer carry his bricks in? Well, it's not his pocket. Well, there's a glass bottle there. Hmm, let's have a look. Contents, one pint. An old Farm. milk bottle, is it? Farmdale. No, Farm Day. Ooh. Is it Farm Dairy? No, Farm Day. Oh. As you can hear, we're very close to a road and the motorbikes are out tonight and driving really quickly. Ooh, that's full of sludge. There we go, farm day. Okay, what's this? At first I thought it was one of the things from the old sash windows, one of the weights. But it's hollow and it's got this on the end. Hmm, strange. There's something inside, like a roller and a bar. The roller is rubber. That's any help. So what do you think that is? Any guesses? Before I climb my mountain with my two bricks on my back, yes. I'm going to just play a little game of plain or pattern with you in case I don't survive. Right. And you can't play it on your own, it's just not the same. No. <laughs> 
Have a go with those. Right, let's have a look. Oh, I'm going to go for this and say plain. Yes, it's got a little line on it. We had sort of a fluted edge, but it is plain. And this one, ooh, I'm going to go for patterned. Oh, look, that is really nice, isn't it? Very pretty. And so this one, ooh, I don't know. I'm going to go for patterned and probably blue. No, oh, it's very similar. Could be the same piece. Oh, that's very nice, isn't it? And I think I just lost 3-0. Never mind. There's the mountain. There's Phil. Complete with not just two bricks, but two bricks and a farm day milk bottle in the bag. We're going to go for it. Go I on then. I say they feel very comfortable on my back. Oh. Well, Caroline said, allow for the fact you now are top heavy going this way. Okay, let's try. Do you think he'll make it in one or is he going to slip back? I like a gazelle. Like a gazelle, yes. I've never seen a gazelle in wellies, but there's always a first time. Ta -da! I've seen some interesting things here. Now, if I move that out of the way, I don't think this is terribly old. I think it's probably somebody's garden planter. But what caught my eye was this. Look at the size on that. I think it's too small for the bottom of a demijohn if I put my hand there. But it's certainly bigger than your average bottle. And let's have a look. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> oh, look at that. It's one of those. I never thought we'd find one of those today. But it's not only stone and ancient bridges that cross the Ebo, because here we have a beautiful modern footbridge. We're going to use that now to get over to the other bank. Um, Caroline just performing there in the evening sunlight. <laughs> okay, let's go take a walk across the bridge. And here's a very modern bridge. This was built quite recently, the bypass that was sent through this part. But what I didn't know until today, although I've driven over this for years, is that on the underside of the bridge, They've done all these wonderful paintings and if I just take you in here can you see all the gym equipment and of course you can use this in the rain as well because the bridge is actually providing a cover it has got an outdoor gymnasium there all those beautiful murals up on the walls and then if we just go this way along the little path toward the riverside here We've got what must be the coolest BMX or skateboard rollerblading track that I've ever seen. I live just a couple of miles away and I never knew it was here. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? I am impressed. Well done to the local authority for building this. 10 out of 10. It's good to get off the beaten track, folks. Good to get out of the car and have a little look because this goes all around here. Oh, I'll have to get Caroline to bring her in lines and have a go at this. Reckon she'd be like a daredevil going around there. Incredible. And there you have the otters up on the wall. And here we are under the dual carriageway. What must be the newest bridge in town? And there below us, we have the River Ebo. Now we've crossed under the bypass bridge and we are on the far bank. We were hoping this would give us access to the river because of the height of the banking on the other side. That's not to be today. We are about 100 feet above the river level and it's a sheer banking going down. So a bit of disappointment, but not the end of the trail for us. Because when I examined this area, on the Google Maps, you can't tell the lie of the land. So you don't realise it's a hundred foot drop. It looks like the river's next door to the path. But what I did see is just over there, at the other side of a playing field, there's another body of water. It's only a short length. Doesn't actually flow very far. Three quarters of it is taken up by a private fishing club. But there is 
a little stretch which we're hoping may have some fine stress it's the old canal it's what was known as the Monbrec canal Monbrec was short for the Monmouthshire and Brecon Canal and it was proposed in 1792, opened in 1796. The Monmouthshire Canal flowed from Newport to Ponty Moyle and then the Brecknock and Ab of Gaveni flowed from Brecon to Ponty Moyle and there they linked. But there was a sideline which came down to Crumlin, known as the Crumlin Arm and it rose 358 feet through 32 locks and it opened right in the last year of the 18th century, 1799. And those 32 locks included one flight of 14 locks. It was astounding. Today, it's destroyed, it's abandoned. There's virtually nothing there, but there may be something there for us. It's been closed since 1962 because the railway lines that were associated to and a partner to the canals initially soon took their place. And just up the road from you, the Crumlin Viaduct, which was started in 1853 and opened in 1857, was a part of that industrial boom. In fact, it was quoted to be one of the most significant examples of technology achievement in the Industrial Revolution. It served for 109 years, was dismantled in 1967, third highest viaduct in the world, and probably found its most famous moment in Arabesque, the movie of 1966, where there was a chase scene with Gregory Peck and Sophie Loren. So, there's an awful lot of history here. There's a great industrial past here. I wonder if there are any finds for us here. Let's get over to that old canal and have a look. Oh, what have you found? Uh, it looked rather disgusting at first. <laughs> yeah. And I was a little bit concerned, but uh, it's two plates yeah. bolted through. Uh, let me just get my screwdriver out of my nice new backpack here. It's a square nut. Not sure about the head. But uh, could well be from the time when this was a working lock. With the square nuts and the amount of rust on this lump of iron, I'm willing to say that is from when this was a working canal. Maybe a repair on a, on a barge that fell off maybe part of a lock maybe i don't know what it is but it's simply two plates bolted together about a hundred years ago okay i've given it a real good dig around and there you have the nuts and um, what i find interesting about those nuts is the way they're formed they're not uniform they're thicker on one side than the other they're definitely i would say forged nuts they're not mass produced nor in any way shape or form so we have got a lump of iron from the industrial age which was very much what this place was all about because we've just got so much history along here especially with regards to this that was once a canal the motorway of the district not quite that anymore i admit but in its day it was, and that's just a little bit of its history. I've seen something over the other side. Now this is really boggy here. So I'm assuming I can't actually go through the middle. I don't want to start sinking too much because I'll get, ooh dear. <laughs> I think it's ugh, not going to work. But I have seen a little dam. So let's go across the dam and have a look. Ah, this has been made out of bags of cement that have gone hard. See if we can get across. Sorry for the bumpy ride. It's very noisy by this road. The road is... Up there. Right, we've got across. Mm -hmm. There it is. Ooh, can you hear it vibrating? It's obviously powered up. Oh, yes. What happens if I press the button? Well, that's an interesting find. You don't find lightsabers every day on the river.
This is such a noisy place to Medlock. The traffic is really loud being so close to the river. But I've seen something that looks like it could be an old bottle. So I turned the camera on. Hopefully it'll be exciting enough to put up with all the noise. Looks like it's glass. It is. Pasteurised milk. Contents, one pint. CWS. Cooperative Wholesale Society. Ooh, so there are old bottles here. Not many though. We've looked and looked and can't find much. Hmm, let's keep looking. Maybe there are more in this area. Right, let's have a look. Lots of little bits on the bottom. Oh, that's a really old, worn piece of wood. Look at that. Let's see if we can pick it up. Oop. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Can you see the ridges? That is a really special piece of wood, isn't it? Shame it's so heavy. Hmm. What's that? Well, it's aluminium. I think it's a little old saucepan. Not much left of it. We don't cooked with that. Was it somebody camping and they lost it, or was it somebody who used it in their kitchen? Very small for a kitchen, really, unless it was just a sort of milk pan. What do you think? Oh, there's a bottle there. Let's have a look at that one. No, oh, there's a hole in it. Now that is a Unigate milk bottle. Mm, now was this where people threw all their old milk bottles when they broke? Or was it a dairy nearby? Hmm. There's another bottom of a milk bottle. I'll pop that back over. Can you see the little ecosystem there? All growing nicely. I'll pop that back over there. They can carry on growing in the warmth. Right, this really is muddy. So pop your wellies on and we're going to try going in the edge here a little bit. Oh, it's sinky. Oh, we'll stay as close to the edge as we can while we're looking. Don't forget, shout if you see something. What's that? Oh, I think that's a little bottle. Oh, look at that, it's tiny. I put it on my hand there. Can we see what colour it is? I think it's clear but full of silt. I don't think we're going to be able to wash that very quickly. No, the hole is too small. Right, let's... Oh, I've seen another bigger ball. Well, considering I didn't think we were going to find anything, we were on our way home, I think we've done really well. That's a pretty bottle. Oh, look at the pattern then, like an orange peely pattern. Perhaps it was off an orange cordial or orange squash, something like that. Clear. The pattern, I like that. Ah, I see something really interesting. It's something we always find on the midlock. It's some ridged pottery, but look at that. It's virtually a whole jar. There's a little bit of a chip there and a hole in the bottom. I found a lot of these with holes in the bottom. Well, bits of bottoms with holes in. I wonder if maybe they were used as plant pots. What another lovely find. This is getting more exciting all the time. What's that? Think that's something interesting? Oh, a bit of plastic. It's more rich pottery. We always like bridge pottery on a bedlock. Ooh, that's looking really squelchy. Oh, it's quite firm. What's that red there? The end of a pen, I think. Ooh, we're not sinking yet. Ooh, I don't like this. I have no idea how far it is to the bottom of this sledge. Oh dear, that's very um, not walkable. There's a jar there. Oh look, it's a jam jar. 
Now I can't get to the water, FMF on the bottom, I can't get to the water to wash it because as you've seen, it looks pretty safe, it's not. So we'll take it back to Phil. Oh, there's an insulator. And there's Phil in the distance washing our finds. Whoa, that's massive. Right, I wonder if I can put my foot on. There you go, there's my foot. So that's off a lorry, I think. A very, very big car. Right, let's have a look along here. Well, that's looking very sludgy. I don't think we should walk on that bit. I wonder if we walk over here. See if it's any safer. It's a bit spongy, but I think we're okay. Oh, that's a big lump of something terracotta. Not quite sure what. You can see the finger marks, or where it's been turned on a wheel. Oh, look! Can you see in there? Is that another big ridge pottery jar? Oh, look. It seems to be. Oh, there's a lot of silt here. Yes, it is. And there's no hole in the bottom of that one either. Let's give it a swill. Oh, that's two virtually whole ridge pottery jars. Don't usually find those. If we look there, the canal has been run just in a small culvert there. And it's coming out the other side of that big tump. I wonder what mysteries are hidden in all this. There are bound to be so many more artefacts than the ones we're finding. A little bit of a buckle. Hmm, I wonder what that's off. I reckon that's off the belt of a 70s dress. What do you think? Somebody was probably walking along this path, snagged their belt on a tree, and the buckle fell off. That's my theory. There's not a great deal of China here, but I have found a couple of little bits. I found that bit of a handle. It's a Ooh. tiny bit of a, a question mark. Yeah, could be. Hmm. But um, scabby little bits, perhaps, but we'll call it mini travel plane or pan. Right, I'm going to go for plane. Yep. One to you. This one I'm going for plane. Oh, there is a plane in the sky. Oh, no, it's a helicopter. So that was right, that's plane. Patterned. Oh yes, another I one. I can't we? win now, can I? You've got three no. out of five. It's a noisy old helicopter. This one, plane. Oh, well, you then you got that one right. That's pretty. Thank you. Thank you, one. <laughs> and this one, I'm going to go for patent. And it's plane. So, three to me, two to Phil, and one to the helicopter. Somewhere mm. up there. Just don't move. I just told Phil not to move. He was about to show you a bit of bottle. Oh, I am so, so unbelievably ecstatically excited. Look what I I've seen. I thought a snake around my leg or something. No, it's more it? important than that. Look what oh I my found. God. Just lying on the side. Oh, look. Oh, oh gee whiz. Oh, that oh. is crazy. I, I just, I can't believe it. I really can't. I'm not just saying that. I expected no. to find nothing down here. And then we found a few broken bottles. And there's a clay pipe with a bit of stem. A large bit of stem. Thing is, Carly found this milk bottle and I said, oh, I thought for a moment I found the top for it, which I hadn't, it's the wrong shape. <laughs> and if I had taken another step, I'd yep, have trodden on that. Definitely. That was dropped from a barge. Yeah. Sailing on the Monbreck, the Monmouthshire and Breckenshire Canal that had its branch here. Uh, that has made my day this we were debating whether this was going to hold together as a video but folks that is the best clay pipe find we've had in wales and it's right where it should be because this water level should be above caroline's head this was a canal there's only a tiny bit of it left that has water in it now in this section and that is a private fishing area we can't go in 
So we are here in the very bottom of what was a canal, or at least on the silt of that. And that is fantastic. Brilliant. In my excitement, I said to Caroline, that's our best ever pipe find in Wales. And I suppose that could be debatable, but it isn't any longer. I can tell you something about the owner of this pipe. And that's because of the patterns that are on it. I am just amazed. I cleaned it up and there's a shamrock on the one side. There's a Celtic harp on the other. Lovely. There's also an S right. on the stem. But I'm, I'm pretty much certain that this is pro late 18th century, early 19th century. This belonged to someone, may not have brought it from Ireland because these were made in the UK, the Irish pipes, but it would have been bought by an Irish Navi working on this canal. Possibly down here because of the jobs that were available, because of the industrialization of the area, but whatever was going on, that is telling a story. And talk about the luck of the Irish. When I washed this to find these beautiful marks, just behind you in the river, my love, there's another bottle. Oh, really? Yes, as I was washing it, I saw it in the base of the river. Let's have a look, see if we can spot it. If not, we'll have to call in for backup and Phil will have to tell us where it is. It's a thing, you leave up clean, I can't find it again. Um, is that it? Oh, yes, yeah, there the it stick, is. stick, you'd move the stick over your foot. Oh, it won't come out. I was out. washing, I hit the edge of it and they cleared off a bit. Doesn't want to come out. There we go. I beat you to it. I say, oh, it's a screw top. Yes, it's a screw top. <laughs> Give it a bit of a wash. It's a nice bottle though. Lovely find. Well, we've had a fantastic time. When we set on journey up the River Ebu, we never imagined that we'd find ourselves on a canal. And we certainly didn't expect to find the things that we did. It's been fantastic. We're so excited. Folks, there's no denying, for me to say what our favourite find was, well, it's stating the obvious. Yes, Mankey's there protecting our treasure of the day, this beautiful Irish pipe. And that is going to be pride of place in our collection. If you've enjoyed this trip with us, go on, give us a thumbs up. Share it with all your friends. Subscribe. If you press the subscribe, it costs you nothing, but they let you know every time we put a video out and most importantly as we always say till the next time we're together out having fun you make sure that you have fun bye bye